Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 21st of June. Indian Prime Minister Modi participates in mass event to mark International Yoga Day. Flood swamp, more of Bangladesh and India, millions marooned. And Sri Lanka students march to demand President's resignation over economic crisis. And now for all the details, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday led India in celebrating International Day of Yoga as he performed yogic exercises along with thousands of participants at a mass event in southern Mysore city. Yoga Day celebrations had remained muted for the past two years due to COVID-19 pandemic, but with lesser number of cases this year, yoga sessions with huge gatherings were held across the country. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi led India in celebrating International Day of Yoga on Tuesday as he performed a number of exercises with thousands of participants at the Mysore Palace in southern Karnataka state. PM Modi pushed for the annual event to be held worldwide after winning power in 2014 with the lifestyle industry centered on the ancient physical and spiritual discipline estimated to be worth around $80 billion. Modi in his speech said, yoga makes us conscious of everything within us and builds a sense of awareness and those with inner peace will create an environment of global peace. Millions of people with inner peace will create an environment of global peace. That's how yoga can connect the people. That's how yoga can connect the countries. And that how yoga can become a problem solver for all of us. To mark the occasion, numerous mass yoga gatherings were organized across the country, including at the Gateway of India in Mumbai, at the banks of River Ganga in Varanasi, and by ash smeared Hindu holy men in Guwahati city. The event this time reflected signs of revival after celebrations had been muted for the past two years due to COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, Indo-Tibetan border police personnel also promoted the importance of wellness through yoga by performing the yogic poses at high altitudes amid snow in Ladakh region. And India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Tuesday defended the government's new military hiring scheme, Agnipath, and said the game-changer plan will not be rolled back despite widespread protest. He said Agnipath is part of PM Modi's vision for a secure and strong India, which includes a relook at the manpower. India's National Security Advisor Ajit Doval on Tuesday said that the contentious Agnipath recruitment scheme for the armed forces, which has been fiercely criticized, will not be rolled back despite widespread protests. In an exclusive interview to news agency ANI, Doval said, a change in the armed forces makeup is necessary if the country wants to prepare for future wars and conflicts. Violent protests were witnessed last week after the scheme was launched with aspirants expressing objection over recruitment for only four-year term, no pension and less options of future employment opportunities. The government later gave a one-time age relaxation and tweaked some rules. Doval explained that the Agnipath scheme is part of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision for a secure and strong India that includes a relook at the manpower and technology. <laughs> वही भविष्य में भी करते रहें तो हम सुरक्षित रहेंगे ये संभव नहीं है यदि हमें कल की तैयारी करनी है तो हमें परिवर्तित होना पड़ेगा Speaking on issues of national security Doval said India would like to have normal ties with neighboring Pakistan but the terrorism threshold for terrorism is very low He said India won't back Pakistan for peace or tolerate transgressions by China in wake of border row 
And in news from Bangladesh, monsoon rains in Bangladesh and neighboring India's northeastern Assam state have killed at least 69 people and have left people with little food and drinking water. Millions have been stranded amid fast rising waters, while authorities are working on war footing to provide aid. Floodwaters inundated more of Bangladesh and northeast India on Tuesday as authorities struggle to reach more than 9.5 million people stranded with little food and drinking water after days of intense rain, officials said. Heavy monsoon rain has brought the worst floods in more than a century in some parts of low-lying Bangladesh, with Silhet district the worst hit, and has killed at least 69 people over there and in northeast India's Assam state in the past two weeks. The flooding has cut off at least three districts of India's northeastern Assam state in the Barak Valley. About 4.7 million people have been forced from their homes in Assam with some 330,000 staying in shelters. Relief operations are ongoing on war footing and rescue workers had evacuated about 1,000 people in the past 72 hours. Extreme weather in South Asia has become more frequent and environmentalists warn that climate change could lead to more serious disasters. Moving on, residents of Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised concern over an acute shortage of clean drinking water as lack of snowfall and deforestation have led to depleting water sources in the illegally occupied region. They have requested the Pakistan government to take this issue seriously and urged authorities to stop rampant exploitation of natural resources. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised their concern over problems related to the supply of clean drinking water as deforestation and lack of snowfall have led to acute water shortage. Some residents lamented that they have to travel 25 to 30 kilometers just to fetch water. They expressed worries that people need to stop cutting trees which is leading to environmental degradation otherwise they will not have access to drinking water in the next five years. They have requested the Pakistan government to take this issue seriously and urge authorities to stop rampant exploitation of natural resources. वो प्रोवाइडेड इंदर की मार्ग में वो प्रोवाइड करें उनको वो फैसिलेट करें कि दरख्तों की बेजाक टाइ बंद हो। Lack of basic amenities has always been issue of concern in the illegally occupied region, but the locals accuse that the stooge government that works at Islamabad behest has always ignored their plight as they are not considered at par with citizens of Pakistan. And in news from Sri Lanka, scores of students, traders and artists marched in Sri Lanka's capital Colombo on Monday to demand the resignation of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa over the ongoing economic crisis. Severe shortages of essential supplies, including fuel and food, have continued to disrupt people's livelihood and education. Thousands of students from state universities, trade unionists and artists marched in Sri Lanka's capital city, Colombo, on Monday, demanding the resignation of the government of President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. They say President Gotabaya is responsible for the economic crisis and that Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, who took over the position a little more than a month ago, promising to end shortages, has not delivered on his pledges. The island nation's cabinet on Monday approved an amendment to the constitution that could reduce presidential powers in a move to appease protesters calling for Rajapaksa to quit. An international monetary fund, IMF team, also began bailout talks with Prime Minister Vikramasinghe on how to structure what will be Sri Lanka's 17th loan program with the global lender. 
අපිට දෙන්න කියලා අපිට නිදහසේ ජීවත් වෙන්න පුළුවන් රටක් තමයි මේ දරුවෝ ඉල්ලන්නේ මේ දරුවන්ගේ අම්මලට තිබුණා වූ හීන සියල්ල බොඳ වෙච්ච මොහොතක මේ දරුවන්ට තිබුණු හීන සියල්ල බොඳ වෙච්ච වේලාවක තමයි මේ දරුවන් ඉල්ලන්නේ දූෂිත පාලකයින් අපිට එපා ගෝඨාභය දැන් ඔයා ෆේල් ගෙදර යන්න Sri Lanka suspended payment on 12 billion dollars of foreign debt in April and is seeking up to 3 billion dollars from the IMF to put its public finances on track and excess bridge financing. Economic mismanagement and the COVID-19 pandemic have left Sri Lanka battling its worst financial problems in 7 decades and a lack of foreign exchange has stalled imports of essentials including fuel, food and medicines. While well, moving on to news from Nepal, police in Nepal's Kathmandu city fired tear gas and charged at protesters with sticks on Monday to break up a demonstration against fuel price hike. Nepal's 29 million people are facing a surge in food and energy prices, raising the risk of social unrest. Police in Nepal's capital Kathmandu fired tear gas and charged at protesters with sticks on Monday to break up a demonstration by students against fuel price hikes in a sign of growing public discontent over rising inflation. State-owned monopoly Nepal Oil Corporation or NOC on Monday raised the price of 1 liter of petrol and diesel by 12% and 16% respectively, prompting fears of broader price hikes. After the hike petrol price has reached rupees 199 while diesel costs rupees 192 per liter around 100 protesters from the all nepal national free student union the student wing of the main opposition cpn uml clashed with police after they were stopped from rallying in kathmandu dinesh manali a police official said protesters threw stones and damaged a police vehicle but there were no injuries or arrests मूल्य वृद्धि यो जनता प्रति गद्दारी हो अपराध हो यो इसको कारण जनता को ढार सिकने अवस्था सृजना फेयर्स फर पब्लिक ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड गुड्स व्हीकल्स हेड बीन इंक्रीज बाय अप टू 7.7 पॉइंट सेवन पर्सेंट फॉलोइंग द फ्यूल प्राइस इंक्रीज लोकल अथॉरिटी सैड नेपाल्स ट्वेंटी नाइन मिलियन पीपल आर फेसिंग अ सर्ज इन फूड एंड एनर्जी प्राइसेस रेजिंग द रिस्क ऑफ सोशल अनरेस्ट Annual retail inflation accelerated to a 6 year high of 7.87% in midday. Supplies Minister Dilendra Prasad Badu told a parliamentary committee on Monday that the hike was necessary because of an increase in global oil prices and to help the loss making NOC to pay for imports. And in news from Afghanistan, mobile schools in the remote areas of southern Afghanistan are inspiring hundreds of young children to learn further while there is no access to school and books. The initiative by volunteer teachers aims to promote literacy and critical thinking in the conservative regions of the war-torn country. Mobile schools in the countryside of Afghanistan's Kandahar province are inspiring scores of young children who have no access to schools and books to learn further. The mobile school, according to its founder, Mathieu Lavisa, has been covering 1,200 students, including boys and girls, by eight volunteer teachers in Kandahar's remote rural areas to help the children get a proper education. They conduct around two hours classes every day in one village and leave for another immediately. موسیقی More than 3.5 million children, including school-aged girls, reportedly cannot go to school due to various reasons such as poverty, security threats and cultural barriers. The Taliban rulers have also indefinitely extended ban on schools for young girls above grade 6. An official said that there is no fixed building for at least 5,000 primary and secondary schools in Afghanistan where students have to attend classes in the open air. A teacher asserted that many people want their children to attend mobile schools, but there is a need to their numbers in far-flung areas. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.